Well, you have your full year earnings as well as your fourth quarter, and you have yet another up year, both yes. in earnings per share and in revenue. At the same time, I think you would agree that you got some headwinds that developed as the year unfolded. Give us a sense of where you think you came out in 2016 and give us a peek into 2017. Well, 2016 was a tremendous year for the company uh, for a variety of reasons. First of all, 14 and 15 had been record years for us, and we de did even better in 16. So we continued to grow the company at a robust clip. In addition to that, the two biggest things that we had to accomplish in fiscal 16 was one, bring Star Wars back. Our first movie, Force Awakens, came out in December, the first one since the acquisition of Lucas, and it was just a gigantic success over 2.1 billion in global box office, third highest grossing movie of all time, and a critical success as well. And the second thing we had to do was to open up the biggest, most ambitious project that we've ever embarked on, and that was building Disneyland in Shanghai. We opened on June 16th. I'm proud to say that after four months of operation, four million people visited the park, and they're loving what they have experienced, and the prospects for that park and the most populous country in the world, I think, are really bright. So as we move to 17, we feel great about what we accomplished in 16. There is momentum in most of our businesses. We have a couple of headwinds as it relates to you know, comparability factors like the cost of the new NBA contract for ESPN and the fact that we don't have a Star Wars saga film in 2017. But we think that the company is headed in the right direction. We've talked about the fact that 17 is an anomaly and that it's a lower growth year than we've experienced since 2013, for instance. But I think it's fair to say the media networks have gotten a lot of attention, particularly ESPN, frankly, in part because it's so successful and so large. But there are questions about the subscriber level for ESPN and some reduction in the subscribers. Can you get, bring us up to speed on where that stands right now? At what rate are you losing subscribers? Is that continuing? Look, we, we've been um, eyes wide open, I'll call it, about what's going on in the television business overall. We've seen a lot of disruption. People are consuming TV on new platforms in very, very different ways in new places as well. Mobile has become really important, for instance. We were candid a year ago about what we, would, what we had been seeing at the time regarding ESPN subs. We had been seeing losses. A lot of it came from the adoption of cable light bundles that did not have ESPN in them. We decided that we would embark on a on a campaign, so to speak, to make sure that ESPN was included in any new light bundles that launched. And we've been quite successful at negotiating deals with distributors, particularly a lot of new distributors, to make sure that ESPN is included in the new packages that are coming out. So we are heartened by, one, a slight abatement in the loss of subs due to light bundles, two, the um, uh, the, the launching of these new digital platforms, which we think provide a great user interface and are very mobile friendly. We know ESPN is a great hand as it relates to their programming. We know that live sports is still really popular. And so while there are some challenges that are due to some of the disruption that we've seen, we actually believe that there are some solutions or some answers to some of the questions that people have had about what's going on with ESPN, and we feel good about our prospects. And as you look out into 2017, do you believe that those new di digital distribution alternatives can make up for the loss of subscribers in ESPN and re resume the normal path of growth that ESPN has enjoyed? Well, ESPN, save for the anomaly that is 2017, because of the 600 some odd million dollars of incremental rights fees due to the new NBA deal, which, by the way, we're not complaining about because we did a deal that takes us through the 2024-2025 season. We have a lot more rights, more games, more programming. And, ES and, and N the NBA is what we consider to be an ascendant sport. It's growing in popularity. But there is an anomaly in 17 because of that. Uh, in 18, we believe ESPN will return to some nice growth again. And we believe ESPN will continue to grow beyond that. So our again, our outlook for ESPN is positive. We can't predict yet just um, you know, what, how big the impact will be from some of these new platforms that are launching because they're just launching. But we feel good about the user interface. We believe that their pricing is right in terms of increasing adoption of those platforms. We think it provides a great alternative to people who thought the expanded basic bundle was too expensive 
or to young people who weren't that interested in subscribing to what they consider to be cable television, but they like new digital platforms. And so we think that this is one of the best developments that we've seen in the multi-channel uh, ecosystem in a long time. And we also know that everybody wants to launch with ESPN as part of their new package because of the popularity of sports and of ESPN.